Johnny. Old Henry hasn't charged a wagon once this morning. Well, after a thousand miles, even a bull gets smart. I think he's waiting to get a shot at you. I'd be downright ungrateful. Nobody ever nursemaded me like we have him. I don't recall you being worth $5,000 either. You make of that. Let's take a look. No! No, yo no soy culpable. Yo no soy culpable, No me ahorques. No me ahorques. Misericordia! Well, that's what I call justice. Misericordia! What's he babbling about? Dios Claude, Claude, don't run the double R no more. Jeremy does. You gotta know that. The rest of the here represent the law? Stay out of this, mister. It's none of your business. Hanging is everybody's business. Anybody here represent the law? No need. Scott Rodriguez here, uh, red-handed, butchering a calf that ain't his. Now, any fool knows that any cow found here from sunup to sundown belongs to the double R. Butchering a cow is no reason to hang a man, is it? Mister, don't be telling me what's cause for a hanging. What's the idea? What's going on here? You got the mechs, Jeremy. Uh, Red-handed. Shut up, Carver. You must be Ben Cartwright. That's right. Who are you? I'm Jeremy Roman, Claude's son. This is my foreman, Ballinger. My son, Joseph, here. One of our hands, Candy. Horse back in the wagon. We're delivering this bull to your father. Came across what seems to be a lynching. Lynching? Carver, what the devil's got into you? I told you there'd be no lynching on a double R. Get You're... this mix out of here and get him into town of the sheriff. I'm sorry this had to happen, Mr. Cartwright. I'll see that he gets to the sheriff. Fine. See you later at the ranch. we happened along, that Mexican never would have gotten to see the sheriff. Yeah. Joe, you and Candy ride into Mesa Verde, get us some rooms. The house I'll take the pool back over to Romans, and then we'll meet at the hotel. Good enough. We'll have a hot bath waiting for you. Good. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring that fellow really good justice. Trust the Romans. Of course you will. Let's go. Off the porch. 
Anybody comes this far, they deserve to be met in the front yard. Well, you've got to be Ben Cartwright. <laughs> got to be Mr. Rogue. My son, Horse. This is my daughter, Mary. Mary? Hi, you. Hear Papa rave about Henry Yates, he'd think he finally conquered the moon. <laughs> now, you us, child, they're going to be asking more money for him. <laughs> Look at him there, just as big as the all outdoors. He's a beautiful animal, ain't he? It's a fine seat, Bo. I'll tell you this, Mr. Roman. If Henry the Ninth hadn't come along, you wouldn't have been able to get him at any price. <laughs> well, it's nice to know my last deal might have been my best. Where do you want to put him? Oh, uh, we build a special pen over yonder there. The boys will show you where it is. And after you get him put up, come on up the house. I got a feeling you men like to get some of the dust out of your craw. I got a feeling you're right. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, uh, I've got dinner on the stove. Uh, would you be good enough to help my papa with his chariot? Yes, of course. <laughs> this blamed thing. You know, you can't run a ranch like this from a baby buggy. Yeah. So I had to turn the whole thing over to my son, Jeremy. Yes, I, uh, I met him on the way in. Fine boy. Yes. Doing a good job. First thing about building a place like this, the pride you can take and pass it on to the next generation. You know something, Ben? Uh, Jeremy's doing a fine job with this ranch. It's like having a new stake, watching him take hold. He's doing fine with the man, stock, everything. I guess in my dotage, I can be proud of that. Have a good look at you. Lord, I think your dotage is still a few years off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I got a bottle of brandy in there. We'll just drink to that. Well, let's have that. <laughs> no, no, no more for me, thank you. Me either, Miss Mary. If I had another one, boy, would have to pull me behind that whack. <laughs> ben, now, why don't you just have one more before dinner? Oh, another time, Claude. Joe and Candy are waiting for us in town. Well, now, Jeremy will be along any minute. Besides that, you got some money coming. Don't forget that. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I'm afraid my father would do anything to keep you company, especially if it meant missing his afternoon rest. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Now, you expect to spend some time with me tomorrow, Jeremy. I will. I will. Okay. All right, Awesome. Thank you. Sorry, gents. Uh, looking for a room? Yeah, we could use four beds for the night. Plenty of hot water. Well, go on inside and sign the register and take the keys from room five and six out of the rack. But you'll have to wait on the bath till my boy gets back. He went to the hanging, a fellow named Rodriguez. And you better hurry if you don't want to miss it, because trials don't take long around here. Not when Jeremy Roman says they're guilty. You'll excuse me. I'm the jury foreman. I gotta run. Free drinks, you know. Sounds like the 4th of July. Let's get over there. That tree would have done just as well. Somebody get that wagon over here. Get the clear it back. Get out. What's this stuff on the table? This is a courtroom. Carver, get this off of here. I declare this court now in session. Remove your hat. Stop the drinking over there until we get this over with. You got your men sorted out? Yes, Your Honor. Jury's ready. Sheriff? How does the defendant plead? Well, not guilty, Your Honor, but... But what? Well, 
Well, most folks already know. Harbor caught this Vex dead to rights with his knife in one of them Roman calves. Now, Your Honor, even in Rodriguez lingo, that, that takes a heap of stretching to plead not guilty, if you ask me. <laughs> order, order. Or I'll throw you out Your of Honor. here. Your Honor. You yelling at me, boy? Yes, sir, I am. Why? I was out on the double R range this morning when they were trying to lynch this man. What's that got to do with now? Well, the way this trial's going, it's no different than a lynching. We'll try him. You just shut up. Look, try him fine, but why the noose outside? Butchering a calf is no hanging offense. All right. What's upset you? He's just a Mex. What do you mean, he's just a Mexican? He's a man like you or me. You can't, can't hang a man for killing a calf. That's murder. Well, down here, we'll decide what offense deserves hanging and what don't. If you don't want to spend 60 days in the clink, you better keep your mouth shut. We've got our own special problems down here. Mr. Roman's been losing a lot of cattle. And we've got to teach these thieves a lesson. Does the jury come to a verdict? Gilly, Your Honor. Rodriguez, I sentence you to hang by the neck till you're dead. The judge said, get him out of here. You see how Virginia City way, you Cartwrights call a turn, but wasn't anywhere to stop him. I don't understand what kind of a judge would do a thing like that happen in the first place. The judge. The judge did what he was told. The verdict was in before that trial ever started. Joe tried to stop him. If he tried any harder, they'd have hung him along with that Mexican. Looks to me like you both tried to stop him. I'm sorry about what happened, but I... I'm glad you tried. As far as I'm concerned, the sooner we get out of this town, the better I'll like it. Well, we can't leave just now. We can't leave, why not? I haven't been paid for the bull yet. Yeah, well, I'm just sorry we have to do business with men like that. Why? Claude Roman's a very fine man. Well, his son, Jeremy Roman, and his men are the ones that beat us up. I said the judge did what he was told. Well, it was Jeremy Roman that told him. said to get rest. Never mind what the doctor said. Ballinger told me what happened today. I meant to be the one to tell you that. That hanging could have been avoided. Well, it was nothing I could do. They caught him in the act. One measly calf ain't worth a man's life. Well, the way it was, I had to turn him in. Rodriguez and his family have been living off of our stock for years. They more than make up for what they butcher by bringing in strays at roundup time. Papa, I'm sorry. I... 
Don't think I... I'm proud of hanging. Blast it, boy. You, you, you've got to learn to... Oh, I guess I shouldn't ride you so hard. I know what a responsibility this ranch is. What it does to a man. But you... You can't let it cloud your thinking. If you do, it'll destroy you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see that the Rodriguez family's looked after, and I can't undo the hanging, but... Oh, good, good. Now, you do that. Uh, let them cut out a little string of their own. It doesn't hurt to be generous at times like this. Oh, and uh, in the saloon, the Cartwright boy and the other one. Oh, that was just a personal disagreement. You know how those things are. You've been in enough saloon brawls yourself to know how those things can happen. A saloon brawl? Oh, yeah. But Ballinger tells me you men beat them up pretty bad. Now, you hear me, boy. Ben Cartwright's done me a good turn, and it ain't right to pay him back this way. Those two had what was coming to them. You can ask any one of my... All men. right, all right. But that still doesn't make it right. You've got to learn to get along with people. You, you... I ain't taking nothing from nobody. Cartwright or no one else. Jeremy, my medicine there in the chest. Tommy, what is it? He's just had another one of his spells, is all. He'll be all right. You've been arguing with him again, haven't you? Can't you see what it does to him? Now get his medicine in the cabinet. I'm going to bed. Son? Jeremy? It's all right, Papa. I'm here. It's all right. I wish you wouldn't let Jeremy upset you this way. It's not Jeremy's fault. I guess my string's a little more frayed than I thought. Shh. Just be quiet. I hate to see Jeremy turn out this way. You're asking a lot of Jeremy, Papa. Maybe too much too soon. You could be right. It's a shame the law won't let me give you your rightful share in this ranch. You could help him. Papa, you're about all the responsibility I want around here. Now, finish your medicine. I think if you get Jeremy a little more room, a little more time, he'll work things out. I hope you're right, child. God knows I hope you're right. You still sure you want to ride out there by yourself? I think Hoss is right, Pa. There's no harm in us riding along just in case there's trouble. Now, look, the surest way I know to find trouble is to go looking for it. Now, all I'm going to do is collect the balance in King Henry, and I certainly don't need an army for that. You'll feel better if we were going with you. You know, maybe I ought to stay here, make sure that you fellas don't get into any trouble.
Pop. Uh, about your boy, Ben. Well, Claude, I'm sure that was just a misunderstanding. Funny, that's, uh, that's just what I told him. You, uh, know Jeremy? Yes, yes, of course. I think your son and I can finish our business without any more trouble. Well, that's all right by me. You'll just step into my office. Well, I'm glad to see you're a sensible man, Mr. Cartwright. No reason for a little trouble out there to uh, interfere with our business, is there? I'll just take the $3,000 and be in my way, if you don't mind. <laughs> $3,000? You know, that's ridiculous. I could buy 200 cows for $3,000. I'll give you 1000 I don't know what kind of game you're playing. The contract with your father says I get $3,000 when the bull is delivered. Oh, that contract. Well, it just happens that I have something here. Proves that contract is uh, not worth the paper it was written on. A court order. Your father seen this? His mind is as sound as yours or mine. Well, we could argue that, but uh, no reason to. This court order is legal. And it states that my father was not responsible when he signed that contract. Your father is a responsible man. Was and is. Cartwright, there's something you just don't seem to understand. See, my father used to be king around here, but uh, he's not anymore. Huh. You the king now? I don't think so. Not by a long way. You're not even a grown man yet. You want to try me? I'm not talking about that. You're a full-grown man in size, but it's more than inches or pounds. You can be four feet tall and be a man, or six feet tall and be a child. Being a man is something that you got to work at real hard. Work at real hard, huh? Yeah. Did you work hard for the Ponderosa? Did my father work hard for the Double R? You stole yours from the Indians, and he stole his from the Mexicans. I paid for everything I've got, and so did your father. And as far as that piece of paper is concerned, that's just what it is. You can't steal this ranch with that piece of paper, and you can't keep it with a gun. All by stringing up helpless Mexicans. Take the thousand or take nothing. I'll do neither. I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll take you to court. I'll take you to every court in the state if I have to. I think maybe that's what your father would do if he were in my place. Cartwright. You want to be the one to break the news to him? I thought not. Take the thousand. I think you better keep it. You're going to need it before I'm through with you. I just can't seem to get together. What's there to get together about? You got a contract, $2,000 down, the balance on delivery. Well, man, uh, I want that bull. God, I'm sorry. It's right out of my hands. Maybe you better talk to your boy about it. between you and Ben Cartwright. Jeremy! Papa wants to know what you did to lose King Henry. I didn't lose him. He just ain't gonna cost as much as we figured, that's all. Yeah. 
If, uh, if you got any ideas about taking that bull with you, I'd reconsider. Could be awful dangerous. I can manage. Carver? You better listen to him, Mr. Cartwright. If I was you, I'd just uh, get on this horse and ride out of here while I could. Carver? Follow him. I want to know what he's up to. Good afternoon, Miss Mary. Occurs to me you're looking more like your mama every day. Same eyes, same hair, same smile. You're a lot alike, you and her. That's a nice compliment. Fine woman, your mother. Your pa never would have held this place together without Kate's help. I've tried to help Papa. A man needs strong help sometimes. That sure was Kate. What are you driving at? The double R's in trouble. It's like a horse. It'll run the way your paw run it, but it won't break to fear. Like hanging a man for trying to feed his family. I'm, I'm going to visit the Rodriguez family as, as soon as Pa gets better. It's too late. They're gone. I rode over there this morning. Rodriguez, Dominguez, Rojas, all of them are gone. The burritos are empty. Without people, you may as well turn this place over to the coyotes. Interesting, little sister. Don't do this to Papa. It's time the old fool let go. Five thousand for that bull. It's proof he's not fit to run the ranch. The bull is worth every cent of that five thousand dollars. Well, I can get him for three. Not honestly, you can't. Why don't you let me decide what's honest and what isn't? Now you tear up that paper. And you give Ben Cartwright the money's coming to him. <laughs> Not a chance. Then I'll fight you. You want to get hurt? You can hurt me all you like. But stay away from Papa. Jeremy, please. You can't do this to him. Tear up that paper. What paper? Papa, don't, please. Come to this, has it? Papa. It's all right, girl. So I ain't got sense enough to handle my own affairs, huh? And the Roman word ain't worth the breath that it takes to give it. There's room for only one voice around here. From now on, no one questions my decisions. Not even you, old man.
I'll fight him, Papa. I have to fight him. He'll destroy us both. You are a public official, and I will not tolerate your threatening me. Well, it seems to me the only threat that I pose for you is that you're going to have to discharge your duty. I'm going to ask you once more, will you please sign an order for Jeremy Roman to pay me the money he owes? Well, now, let's, let's be reasonable. Now, you know I can't settle a personal dispute. There's nothing personal about this. But it's a legal matter. There's a contract here. Well, we've been all through that. Claude has nothing to say about anything anymore. That old man can spit and make it stick. Well, this contract was signed... Mary. Go on, Judge Rideout. As you were saying? Well, I was just telling Cartwright, uh, Mr. Cartwright here, that uh, your brother has sole control over everything that goes on out to your place, and uh, if he doesn't want to honor that contract, well, then he doesn't have to. Because of the uh, writ you gave him? Making him my father's guardian? Hmm. That's right, yeah. Well, that's why I'm here, to demand that you rescind that immediately. Now, you know I can't do that. As a woman, unless you're the sole heir in the eyes of the law, you haven't got any rights. What about Claude Roman's rights? That document was executed in this office. It's legal and binding. Now, if Jeremy uses that paper, you know that it'll destroy my father. Your brother's just trying to see that Cartwright or people like him don't take advantage of your father, that's all. Now, you know, Claude's getting on in years. Papa bought King Henry before he turned the ranch over to Jeremy. Why don't you let your brother do the business? He knows what he's doing. And he's going to do a lot for the double R. And for the Mesa Verde, too. Seems to me he'll be doing quite a bit for you, too, Judge. Well, just hold it right there, Cartwright. These are chambers. But I can still cite you for contempt. Yes, you can, Judge. You surely can. But let me tell you something. I'm taking this to a higher court, because this contract is going to be honored and damage is paid. Well, you can take it through all the courts you want, but you still ain't going to get the bull back. You know, down here, possession ain't nine-tenths of the law. It's the whole thing. Well, I'll pick up my property in the morning. Well, I reckon you can try. But with you holding $2,000 of Jeremy's money, he ain't going to like that. Now, Judge Rideout, now you know you have the power to put an end to this. Now, I, I have already stated the position of the court, young lady. Why don't you go on home and do what you know is right? I might just as well for all the good I'm accomplishing here. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for trying. You come for King Henry. You may find there's still some honor in the Roman family. Get out there and tell Jeremy this ain't going to work. That Cartwright is apt to cause a lot of trouble for all of us. Sounds like you're getting nervous in your old age, Judge.
night, Miss Mary. Good night, Clem. Thank you very much. Well, since when have you taken the moonlight rise with Clem Ballinger? Mary. I asked you a question. I want an answer. I went to see Judge Ryder. Oh. Little sister's got claws. What about? About you? What you done to Papa? What I can do about it. What can you do about it? Nothing legally. <laughs> I could have told you that. Saved you the ride. But there is something I can do. Ben Cartwright's coming for King Henry tomorrow. A lot of good that's gonna do him. Now, he's entitled to reclaim his property and keep the 2,000 Papa already paid him. Not even your tame judge can stop that. Well, you're forgetting just one thing. I don't need a judge or anybody else to tell me what to do on my own place. And you're forgetting you're not the only Roman on this ranch. But I'm a Roman that counts. I may not be the image of our mother like you are, and I'm not the old man spoiled darling like you are. And besides, I've had enough of that in my lifetime. But I'm his son. And according to the laws of Texas, this place comes to me. And that's all the more reason why you must do what's right. Now, tomorrow you'll see Ben Cartwright gets what's legally his. And with the full apologies of this family. <laughs> you want me to apologize to Cartwright? If you don't, I'll do it for you. In every newspaper west of the Mississippi. Don't you threaten me, Mary. No, I'm past being afraid of you. You've caused all the pain you can in this household. You can't hurt Papa and me anymore. Come in. Your sister talked to the judge. Oh, uh, yeah? Her and Cartwright. Judge says Cartwright could cause some real trouble. Really? Get some men together and meet me down at the bullpen. Well, it sure is a devil of a time to pick the slap of brat on that bull. about slapping a brand on him. We're just going to prepare him for delivery to Cartwright tomorrow. Fellas, this is one town I bid goodbye with no regret. Now, second that, it's been no picnic on any cut it. Hey, did you get the answer? I sure did. Judge Ferguson's going to be in Amarillo all this week. We'll have a hearing in a couple of days. Good, let's get moving and pick up Henry. It's gonna be nice meeting Jeremy on equal terms. Chili, let me put this on your shoulders. No, it's uh, it's fine. Just just fine. I think you should wait out here. They may not come for a while. They'll come. When they do, I want to be waiting for them. You being a woman wouldn't understand the shame like this. Ben Cartwright does not blame you, Papa. Jeremy's my son. My blood. And I'm as responsible for his actions as he is. Ben knows that. Don't feel like this. It'll make you really sick. Don't you fret over me. I know how much time I got. And I know how I want to spend it. Sure, uh, nobody's been 
down the bullpen. Not a soul. Looks like you ordered. Claude, I guess you know why I'm here. Mary told me. I'm the one that's been shamed, Ben. King Henry's yours. You take him, nobody will give you any trouble. Joseph. Joe, you and Horace get King Henry. You just never seem to learn, do you, Cartwright? You're still talking to the wrong man. Mary, go on out. I'll see. You're overlooking something. There's a little matter of $2,000 to settle up. Jeremy. That money rightfully belongs to Ben. Virginia City is a long ways. He deserves at least that much. All right, you keep that money card, right? Because I was supposed to give it to you anyway. You see, my sister warned me. Oh, yeah, and she said I was supposed to uh, apologize, so you can consider that done. Now you can, uh, you can take that bull of yours and uh, get off the double R. Ah! Bull's dead. Somebody cut him up. I was right about you, wasn't I? You're contemptible. That's strong talk. Oh, it'll be a whole lot stronger. The judge in Amarillo waiting for me to press charges against you and about to come back here and drag you there. I'll do it. That won't be necessary. I'm going to do what I should have done right in the beginning. Mary, fix the balance of Ben's money for me. I ain't going to let you do it, old man. Don't tell me what I can do on my own place. This ain't your own place. It's mine. Claude, you don't have to. Somebody has to. This is my son, but he ain't fit to live with pigs. That money ain't yours to give. I make the decisions around here. This last one I'll make. Sometimes a man wishes for something so hard he... He blinds himself. And thinking that I raised a man. Hold it, boys. Just put them right there on the ground. As soon as we get back, we'll send you one of Henry's best yearlings. We'll, we'll give you the pick. Your papa would like that. I have a feeling your papa would like many things to come here. You hang on to his dream. You won't go wrong. Thank you. 
I will. Take care, Jim. Well. That's what he's for. A young girl like Miss Mary running a, an operation like the Double R all by herself. Yeah, you're right. She's quite a gal. She'll grow into it. Thank you.